In the long course triathlon world, there is no longer any real debate about who is the greatest male triathlete to ever live. It is almost universally agreed that the title belongs to one man and one man only. And that man is Jan Frodeno. Jan Frodeno has done it all. He's won the sport's two biggest crowns in the Olympic gold medal and the Ironman World Championships. And he's won the Ironman World Championships three times. There's then also the next biggest prize in triathlon, the Ironman 70.3 World Championships, of which he's won two. Jan was 27 years old when he won his Olympic gold medal in 2008, and in 2019, 11 years later, when he was 38 years old, he became the equal oldest winner of the Ironman World Championships ever with another triathlon legend, Craig Alexander. That's even older than Mark Allen, the one other male triathlete with any real claim to being the greatest of all time, who in 1995 won his last ever Ironman World Championships at 37. Inside of those 11 years at the top of the sport, Jan Frodeno achieved some incredible feats. In 2015, Jan was undefeated, a year which included winning both the Ironman and Ironman 70.3 World Championships. And then, between 2018 and 2021, a four-year straight period, Jan won every single race he started. This included, in my opinion, Jan's greatest ever performance at the 2019 Ironman World Championships, where Jan broke the course record. Breaking that course record and having the perfect day in Kona was the one final thing that Jan needed to tick off. And he did. So why, if in 2019, at 38 years old, when Jan became the equal oldest winner of triathlon's most prestigious race, are we still talking about him four years later? Shouldn't he have retired like all of triathlon's other great champions had done when they hit their 40s? Well, in long course triathlon, there is a new race series on the block that has quickly established itself as being one of the major races a professional triathlete wants to win in their career. For Jan Frodeno's entire career, those titles have been the Ironman World Championships, the Olympics, and the Ironman 70.3 World Championships. And Jan had won them all. In fact, he dominated them all. But now we have the PTO Opens, and they have become the sport's richest races with massive prize pools, and they attract the strongest fields of any long-course triathlon races in the world. The PTO Opens started in 2022 with the PTO Canadian Open and the PTO US Open. They were won by Gustav Eden and Magnus Ditlip, who were 26 and 24 years old at the time respectively, and part of Long Course Triathlon's new Young Wave, who in 2022 won every big race in the sport. And so while Gustav and Magnus were winning the PTO Opens, and the Young Wave was winning everything in the sport, Jan Frodeno was at home, 41 years old, dealing with chronic injuries he'd developed in training and racing in a bid to stay competitive at the top of the world's hardest sport, something which no one else his age had ever done. It really did look like Father Time had caught up with the greatest to ever do it and his career was done and that the next generation had surpassed him. But this is Jan Frodeno and on August 4th, 2023, Jan did the impossible. He came back and at 42 years of age, he won long course triathlon's hardest race to win, a PTO Open and the one race he needed to put on his resume before he retired to be able to say he'd won it all. So how did Jan do that? Let's take a look. In 2023, there were three PTO Opens, the European Open, the US Open, and the Asian Open. The European Open was the first Open of the year, and it had almost everyone on the start line. It had Christian Blumenfeld, Magnus Ditlev, and Max Newman, who are all part of the young wave I talked about before as those that have taken over the helm at the top of the sport. But it also had the old guard in Alistair Brownlee and Jan Frodeno. This was Jan's first race back from almost two years of battling chronic injuries and watching the sport go past him from his couch at home. Jan came fourth that day at the European Open, with all three people who beat him being that new young guard. Max Newman won, Christian Blumenfeld came second, Magnus Ditlev came third, and Jan was three minutes behind in fourth. Now, you might look at fourth place in one of triathlon's hardest to win races and think, well, that's close. But what you need to remember is that when Jan Frodeno was at the top, he didn't come fourth. In fact, that would have been seen as a complete failure to Jan. Jan Frodeno was the guy who won races, and at his best, if races he won were even close, that seemed like an average performance from him. That's how far ahead of the rest of the sport Jan was. So, fourth place, three minutes down, everyone had written him off. And it was at that point when everyone thought it was true that the next generation was here and Jan was now too old, too slow, and would never be the same dominant force he was only four years ago. And this was the theme of Jan's year. He never looked like the old Jan Frodeno. So when the gun went off for the PTO US Open, the second PTO Open of the year, on August 4th, with Christian Blumenfeld, Magnus Ditlev, Matthias Margier, Sam Long, and Jason West, 
all members of the new wave and all on the start line next to Jan. Jan wasn't the favourite. The clear favourite was Christian Blumenfeld. Christian had now come second behind Gustav Eden at the PTO Canadian Open and second behind Max Newman at the PTO European Open. Christian had raced two PTO Opens for two second places. Christian Blumenfeld, at only 29 years of age, had now also won everything in the sport except a PTO Open title. He'd won the Olympic gold in 2021, the 2021 Ironman World Championships, and the Ironman 70.3 World Championships in 2022. Christian was essentially the new Jan Frodeno, except he did have rivals who on their day could beat him, Gustav Eden being the main one, but now Max Newman was also one of those following the PTO European Open. But neither of those men were racing the PTO US Open, and so this was finally Christian's time to win. He wasn't just the favourite, Christian was the unbackable favourite, who a lot of people were talking about like he had already won. And we all know how much winning meant to Christian and his legacy, given that he'd won everything else in the sport and all he needed was a PTO Open title. And leading into the race, it wasn't just the fans who thought Christian was the unbackable favourite. Christian himself thought that the race was his to lose. But remember, Christian wasn't the only athlete on the start list who had won everything in the sport of triathlon except a PTO Open title. Prior to the gun going off to start the PTO US Open, Christian Blumenfeld and Jan Frodeno sat down for a face-to-face preview of the race. And like I said, it wasn't just the fans who thought Christian was going to win. Christian also wasn't afraid to tell people he was going to win. And so during this face-to-face, two days out from the race, Jan called out Christian for his overconfidence. Yeah, honestly, like, like man, I, I totally respect what you've done and everything, but it does remind me a little bit of when I speak to my daughter. Um, I, I, I explain to her the concept of crying wolf. And, you know, when every single time you say, oh, I'm going to win, I'm going to smash you, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Well, we're waiting and uh, we've waited for a while now. So uh, I'm going to keep you waiting a little longer. Challenge accepted. I guess you better wait two more days and then we will beat her. Very good. An underrated part of Jan Frodeno's brilliance is his mental warfare. At the peak of his powers, Jan Frodeno had often won races before they began. He just knows how to get into his competitors' heads and make them race in ways they otherwise might not. And this day at the PTO US Open was no exception. After the swim at the PTO US Open, Christian Blumenfeld and Jan Frodeno both came out in perfect positions. Christian in fourth, Jan in eighth, eight seconds apart, and both of them inside a strong eight-man lead pack. A big question mark on Christian Blumenfeld was whether he would be able to keep up with the lead pack in the swim. But not only did he keep up, he was almost leading it. Christian is known as one of the best runners in the sport, and at the time was certainly seen as the best runner in the lead group of eight out of the water. So, exiting the swim and getting onto the bike, it looked like the race was set up perfectly for Christian to win his first ever PTO Open. But then Christian did something we weren't used to seeing. He went to the front of the bike from the start and attacked. Christian had never done this in a race before. And not only did he put in an attack, he put in a huge attack that split the group to pieces. He was 30 seconds ahead of Matthias Magier and Jan Fredino. They were then a further 30 seconds ahead of the other five men who had been in the lead swim pack only moments before. This move from Christian was high risk, high reward. To get away from the other men requires riding above the power you would like to to have your best run. But it also means everyone else has to do the same thing to catch you. And he did get caught. Matthias Magier, Magnus Ditliv and Jan Frodeno caught him. And it looked like this lead group of four men would ride together to T2 to start the run. But then, Magnus Ditliv went to the front and put in a massive move. Magnus Ditliv is known as being the sport's best cyclist. And before we knew it, Jan Frodeno had been dropped. And he was 30 seconds down, and it looked like his race could be over. However, Jan being Jan, brought forth all of his experience and managed to get back in touch with the group, with only 5 kilometres to go in the bike, by absolutely hammering a technical downhill section. And despite the fact Jan got back on, it did look like the race was set up for Christian to win. There were four men left and Christian was the best runner. But then, when they got off their bikes and began to run, Christian cramped. Badly. Matthias, Jan and Magnus took this opportunity and quickly got a 15 second gap to Christian. Jan then looked at the other two men he was running with, rewound the clock and went. He attacked and he attacked with authority. He distanced Magnus and Matthias and the gap to Christian was growing. Then, with Jan 30 seconds ahead of him, Christian cramped again. And before we knew it, Jan had a two-minute lead on Christian Blumenfeld. It was at this point that you couldn't help but think back to Jan's mind games leading into the race. Jan challenged Christian's confidence and told him he was like the boy crying wolf. Did this lead to Christian attacking early in the bike, above what he was capable of, and sabotaging his own race, all to show Jan that he wasn't just going to win, he was going to dominate. 
We will never know the answer to that. But it wasn't how Christian had ever won his big races before. And it looked like that overbiking was the thing that had Christian two minutes down on Yarn. With 12 kilometres to go in the 18 kilometre run, Yarn was out in front and in control of the race. And it stayed that way for the next eight kilometres. 14 kilometres into the run, four kilometres to go, and Yarn still had a two minute lead on Christian. Christian was now joined by Jason West, the sport's best runner, and they were running next to each other. Christian, amazingly, seemed to have recovered from his cramps and was digging deep to hold on to Jason. Yarn was losing time to Jason and Christian. Two kilometres later, with two kilometres to go, 16 kilometres into the run, Yarn was only one minute ahead, and inside the final kilometre, Jason and Christian were closing hard. They got to within 30 seconds of Yarn, but Yarn pushed to the line and won. Yarn had done it. At 42 years old, after being written off by everyone, the greatest of all time showed why he was the greatest of all time. He beat the new generation, over a distance that suited them, in a race that suited them, and he did it as impressively as any race he'd ever won. Jan had many great performances over his career, most of those when he was in his prime, at the top of the sport, without many close rivals to challenge him. So this win at the PTO US Open, when he wasn't the favourite, when everything was stacked against him, trying to do something no other 42-year-old male had ever come close to doing in triathlon, was truly special. Jan Fredino went on to retire three weeks ago at the end of the 2023 season. And if there was ever any debate left as to who was the greatest male triathlete of all time, Jan's performance at the PTO US Open all but put that to rest.